What's happening guys? I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. We have the last Sunday video for June, We're heading into July by week's end. One thing to keep in mind is sometimes they like to paint it up into the end of the quarter. Make the funds hit certain bonuses, things like that. Sometimes it's just like an unwritten rule. No selling, <laughs> let's bid it up. And you know, you see things start to float up on, on low volume. So Couple that with the fact that we've got July 4th coming, and I don't know if it's, I think it's probably a half day before it. Uh, I don't know which way the, uh, they observe. Usually they do a half day and then the, the actual day off. Unless July 4th happens on the weekend and maybe that's how it is, I don't know. But I will check before I do the second part of the video and have that information. Um, but either way, uh, fantastic week last week. Cam uh, came in and Sam, Came in. Lobster roll with a view. With a view. <laughs> what a... That's Trades Turbo, uh, who has been uh, part of IU for quite some time and now does the midweek study sessions every Wednesday. So we actually did one uh, live together and uh, then he has another one uh, this week with Kim. Uh, Kim Ann Curtin, who, uh, you know, we're going to start doing those probably once a month and see what you guys think. Hopefully you guys take advantage of it. Everybody that is in IU, we did do a course uh, with her where I don't remember how many chapters it is. It might be five or six or something like that, but uh, it just kind of goes through and it's, it's to help you and support you uh, in your you know, kind of mindset along this journey. And um, you know, there's, there's many, many, many reasons why uh, you might find her beneficial. Um, but one of, uh, one of the common things I feel like, uh, is a lot of traders that, that meet their, you know, expectations do not feel the way in which they thought they would. Right. And just like I always have done videos, you know, yeah, you can want that Lambo. You can want that, you know, whatever it is that you've got on the pedestal. But once you get there, it doesn't really check off the box in the same manner that you thought it would, right? It's cool for a little while and then it's like, eh, you know, what, what's, what's this? And no, I don't have a Lambo, I'm not saying that, but uh, this is just like the, um, the, the commonality between uh, all of the, the traders that I know and, and they hit this number and, and they, you know, that's it, that was their goal. You know, I just wanna get to X. And as you guys know, the goalpost always changes, right? 100K becomes 500K, becomes a million, two, five, 10, 50, 100, and it just keeps on going. Unless you figure out what makes you happy, what you're passionate about, and everybody is different. And one of the biggest issues with social media, with trading, with all of this, you know, entire community out there of, of traders is, you know, they market what, you know, you think you want, right? You know, flashy cars and the mansion and this and that. And then, you know, for the small, small percentage that actually get there, once you get that, it's not what you think. It's not what you want. So point is, is somebody like Kim can come in and kind of, what, what is your purpose? What makes you happy and help you and keep you accountable uh, to getting to those, um, you know, where you want to be basically. So I wanted to share one thing, uh, one change that I've made uh, that I'm trying because, you know, as, as I kind of get into stage two of, you know, what I want out of, of trading, um, you know, the thing is, is when you, when you become a trader, you've got to really give it your everything, right? And I think a good example is something like Tom Brady or, um, you know, whomever your, your favorite athlete is and just the amount of work that they put in. It's not about just showing up and throwing the ball and you know, it, it works, but actually what happens behind the scenes. And one of the documentaries, I think it's uh, Tom vs. Time, I've always said. I, I think it's Facebook and a few other places, I don't remember, but uh, actually seeing how much, you know, the, the game is only so many hours, but seeing how many hours he puts in on an everyday basis to get to where he got, 
I mean, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So uh, in my opinion, this is a, a great way, especially for, for me to, you know, unravel those habits that got me to where I got. And no, I'm not comparing myself to, to Tom Brady. He's, he's great. Um, but what I'm comparing myself to is how much I've put in to get where I got. And the only way that you actually enjoy it is to kind of unravel that habit and build new ones. So one of the uh, changes that I've made and one of the things that I'm trying right now is I've just set my alarm on my phone every day. And I tried it at like 10.50 a.m. and it was a little too early. But I've set it for 11.30 a.m. just to be aware that it is now 11.30. Because what happens is a lot of times, and I'm sure some of you guys are the same way, I know me and Eric and, and many others are, um, but it doesn't even mean that you're on the wrong side of the trade, but maybe it's working, maybe it's not, but it's not really uh, continually working. It's not, it's just sideways, right? A, a, a name, you get in a name, you get on the right side, or maybe it's just you're on the wrong side, but not a lot. I'm not talking about fighting a trade, but what are you using your time for? And a lot of times you just get stuck in this mode and it just goes sideways until what? 4 p.m. And yet you stay there from 11.30 a.m. to 3.55 p.m. and start your exit five minutes before close or right into the close. You just had all those hours wasted. That's time that you've exchanged for that without any money involved. You should be getting paid to be sitting there. And if you're not, you should reevaluate. So that's why I've set an alarm uh, just to be aware that it's 11.30, recheck in like, hey, am I just sitting in this to sit in this? Then get out, reevaluate. And I actually did that with APLD where it ramped up. I got an amazing entry, <laughs> flushed down. I should have, and I'll go over it. I should have covered uh, a lot of it because it flushed down under nine, I mean, excuse me, 10, and then it rallied back up to eight, uh, 11.50s. And this was on Friday, the Friday trade. But then it was just sideways, 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 sideways. And I looked at it, my alarm went off, and I was like, you know what? It's beautiful outside. I've been sitting here for an hour waiting for which way it's gonna go. It's either gonna swipe up 50 cents or flush 50 cents. And either way, I'm either gonna lose or that's what I'd be scaling in anyway. So why not just take some up? And so that allowed me to remove myself from the desk and enjoy the day. And it's just something that I want to continually be aware of because what's gonna happen, I just turned 38 last week. I'm gonna turn 40, 45, 50, and I'm gonna wish that I had made these changes. Habits, to building new habits take time. And so uh, as much as you know, when you are you know, good in one area, you exploit that as much as you can. When you're weak, you surround yourself with people that are better than you. And uh, in this case, I surround myself with people that keep me accountable. And so, you know, it's annoying to have Kim maybe text me and have to say, oh no, I didn't do it, right? That's, that's not what I want to do. I don't want her texting me every single day and say, no, no, I didn't, I, I ignored the alarm today, right? So there's an accountability aspect that, you know, for some people you may need. I need it at the gym, right? I know that I need to show up and go see Zach every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. and I know that I need to show up, you know, most of the times, unless I'm sick, which I, once again, I am sick, uh, on Saturday and Sunday to get my day started, 9 a.m. to 9.30, 9.45. He keeps me accountable. I am weak at self-motivating. However, I surround myself with accountability partners, essentially, and they keep me going. And eventually, that accountability turns into habit and then you don't need that anymore. Um, all right. So I want to talk about that because that is one change and I will share those changes along the way. One other goal for me is on Fridays to be done by noon, especially in the, in the summer. Um, and you know, we'll see how we, how it goes and it's a work in progress. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but over time, that is my goal to slowly transform, you know, what I do and what I've built up as habit. Uh, that is no longer really helping me in, in any way. At the end of the day, I want to trade to live, not live to trade. 
Um, so I'm going to go over APLD trade, which I did extremely well on. Um, but could have been better, especially with the first cover. I positioned myself properly. Uh, I was expecting them to exhaust everybody out 1150s. It worked absolutely perfect. Um, but still felt like it should have been bigger. Same thing with AFRM and CVNA and all these other names. You know, I can't uh, sit here and tell you that I'm trading a lot smaller and trying to enjoy my summer and then say I absolutely smashed it and had a career day. No. So I felt like I should have had a career day. Um, but, you know, it was a good day. It was great trades. Um, but it was not anything crazy because I am legitimately trying to uh, enjoy these days. Uh, and then otherwise, AGLE, I wanted to go over a little bit of the psychological side um, and sort of that thought process in the morning on Friday. Um, Thursday, a crazy move. I actually got a good entry. Uh, it flushed down almost like, I think maybe 50, 60% off that. Uh, no, I think it was about 50% or so. Um, and then I ended up screwing it up. I ended up losing on it overall and I never went back to it because I was like, you know what? I was, I was, I had a little bit of fear that it could go into a circuit halt. So I avoided it off the open. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it, let it be. So, uh, it would have been nice, but it is what it is. Um, so anyway, let's get into a scan for the week ahead. We'll go over the winners, uh, for the t-shirts next. And, uh, like I said, reminder to myself, I'll let you know in about one minute whether or not we have a day of observation for July 4th or just July 4th off. Um, but this is the week, or next week's the week that I typically try to be away from screens. It's my daughter's birthday. It's the year that we go up to the beach and I try to actually not, you know, merge everything together uh, each year. And most years I fail pretty well. Uh, so this year I have... Uh, I have, uh, I, I have, I, I think I might be able to do it. Uh, we'll see. But anyway, let's get right to it. All right. So for the second part of scan, as always, I'm not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations. And this is for educational and informational purposes only. We've got two winners for the comments. As you guys know, all you need to do is leave a key takeaway or retweet, like the tweet at 6 p.m. when the scan comes out. And this week is Reba Jason1460 and PT1337JT. So you've got the t-shirts for this week. Hopefully they're new people. I always try to find new, uh, new individuals that haven't maybe got it before. Um, but uh, then there's people that end up with three or four shirts too. Um, but uh, either way. I wanted to go over APLD a little bit. As I said, uh, I would give you the answer. July 4th is the only day off. So uh, the observation is only if it's on the weekend. Um, but I wanted to go over APLD. That ended up being a fantastic trade. And every morning at 8.50 a.m., I go over all these trades on my broadcast and sort of give the game plan. What would make me take a particular trade? What I'm looking for? What would be ideal setup? What would be you know so-so setup? And so APLD already had some great action, some great uh, moves pre-market. And I had a fantastic entry. I focused on where the congestion is. People a lot of times ask me, uh, you know, how do you find those levels? And I'm only looking for key areas which maybe give you pause. You, you know, you're kind of watching and you're like, huh, that, that almost topped there, but then it held on. Or maybe there's a big seller that kind of came in. And congestion, where is the trade you know, where is there a lot of congestion? Where is it, it consolidating around? Where is most of the volume around? And so that's where my levels come in. And a lot of times it goes right back to those spots each and every single time. So I had a fantastic trade on APLD and it, it ended up being uh, a, a perfect prep from, from pre-market. But um, more importantly, two things. One, yeah, I should have been sized way more. But like I've said, I'm, I'm summer sized right now and I'm just you know trying to, trying to relax a little bit too. Um, but I, I gave myself uh, enough room, even though I could have traded it better. I had 1165, 1160s and scaled um, on the, actually the rebound back up. Uh, I had a great trade going into open under 10 and then it rallied back. So I knew that everybody probably did the same thing. The trade was easy. Right, and that doesn't mean trading is easy. I always have to say that because people hear one thing and 
then they take it out of context. Trading is not easy, but when a trade is easy, everybody wins, right? So if it goes straight, 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 straight down, and there's no real reason for a cover, a lot of times you have a rally back, which could be kind of like a lethal swipe back up, but then you get people starting to add because it was so easy on the way down. So they've been kind of trained like, oh, all you have to do is short pops, easy money, straight down. So when that happens in a situation like this and it's easy, I pause. I don't oversize and I wait because now I know that this, you know, the add, add, add has to now exhaust out. And once that exhausts out, that's when the edge starts to come back. So 1150 looking left was a key level. 11s for not only from a psychological hole and half dollar mark type situation, but also because, uh, you know, that, that was an area of congestion. And then the dip and rip levels uh, 1080s. In 1080s, the reason why I came up with that level was consolidation and, and where there was a little bit of support. Pre-market, before it dipped down, after open, came back, congested around that area, and you see each time it flushed down, came back, flushed down, came back, off that level, almost to a penny. Almost annoyingly so, where I was actually trying to cover a few times and I missed them by literally like a penny. Um, and it's frustrating, for sure, but the key is just to reevaluate, am I too size or am I sized properly? If you're sized properly, fine. But if you're oversized, at that point, if you miss your cover, typically I like to size down. I can always resize back up. But if you don't and it ends up swiping, you're in trouble. So anyway, um, as you guys saw the, the trade that I took on this, you know, I waited for the, the exhaustion kind of fail um, and, and start to get heavy. Meaning, exhaust out the covers, and then give a reason for sellers to come. And so normally, you know, there's no real reason to sell unless the trend breaks. Not one break, not two breaks, but after it retests and fails and retests and fails, does it start to stay heavy and unwind? That's exactly what happened. And we uh, had a benefit of maybe seeking article alpha, uh, seeking alpha article or uh, some other things midday that, that forced it down more. I, in my opinion, they just kind of liquidated throughout the day. Uh, 1140s was a super, super key level for those of you guys that recorded the tape. Uh, there was just a constant uh, absorption at 1140s. And then every time it went to 1150s, it was almost like a, a stuff fail, right back to 1140s. Stuff fail, back to 1140s. So once 1140s started to fail, 1130s started to fail, I start to zone in and really focus in on uh, now there's a good chance that the sellers are going to start to be uh, in the tape as well. So once we had the flush under 1080s, that's when I started to rescale into the trade. I was still covering. I was being proactive above 1080s because every other time it hit 1080s, I wish I had covered, right? And so sometimes you might miss out on a big flush on full size if you do that. But more often than not, it's going to keep the emotions out and you should feel comfortable in a trade. And if you don't, that's when you get chopped up and that's when trading becomes not as fun. Um, and AGLE, the uh, other comment that I just wanted to kind of talk about this one, obviously a, a huge um, move the, the first day. Um, and uh, you can see it just went kind of straight up. But the thought process in a situation like this, it had gapped down. And whenever something goes up further than you think, it usually comes down further than you think. And then as it rebounds, it'll go up just a little bit more than you think before it comes down. So you always want to build that in. So an example like AGLE has a week open, starts to rally back, rally back. There's a lot of things going for it, right? Potential red to green move, potential bounce play went 90 cents to basically what, 40 cents or so, no bounce. So you've got that bounce play, you've got the red to green potential and you're nearing that 50 cent mark, which is that psychological 50 cent half, you know, basically the half dollar mark, dollar mark. Um, so I always like to uh, pay attention when there's a lot of things that kind of um, are all coming together at once, because if you think about uh, how many players will be coming into that, you know, you might have a red to green player, you might have a 50 cent type, like, oh, this is a big break. Uh, you might have a bounce player. You might have all these different things. So it's going to be a, a highly liquid uh, name, event, and opportunity. And so nice blow off move and then steady fade. So it goes higher than you think, lower than you think, 
higher than you think, and then reality starts to hit. Same thing with AI, same thing with CVNA. Everybody wanted to fade it, everybody wanted to you know, find the top. CVNA went higher than you think, lower than you think, came all the way back up and you finally gave up, you said the hell with it, and what happened? Huge unwind CVNA last week, huge unwind AI because everybody gave up. So anyway, um, for the week ahead, we have APLD. Uh, ideally, this gap holds. I'd love to see it go 9, 920. Keep in mind, everybody's going to have the same thought process, right? Um, so anyway, these are under main watches, by the way. I'm transitioning into a Sunday video, um, or at least for the uh, watch list for the week ahead. So under main watches, I have APLD. And I think that this could be a super, super crowded idea in the sense that, yes, everybody's going to want to gap up. Everybody's going to want it to blow out and then fade all day. And I think that's what will happen. However, when everybody prepares for the same thing, wait five or 10 minutes. Let's see. Let's see if that idea is correct. Let it prove your idea correct and then join rather than assuming you're correct and then being like, oh, everybody did the same thing and it needed like another hour to blow people out. Um, but higher the better, reactive trade, and we should have a nice big trade again. CCL has earnings on Monday, should be a great trade. 1550s has been that key level for quite some time that we've been discussing. Uh, so hopefully higher the better there, reactive trade. Whether it's a, a long or short, I don't care, but 9.45, 10 a.m. plus is where I'm gonna focus. And just a reminder for anybody that's new that's watching these, anytime I take a trade off the open, I am proactively covering or selling, depending what side I'm on, before 9.45, 10 a.m. You don't want to have this bias carry through because a lot of times you might have reactive trade off open, slams down, and then it just recovers the rest of the day, right? So by forcing your bias, forcing what you want to see, you know, after 9, 9.30, 9.45, 9, uh, 10 o'clock, a lot of times you'll minimize uh, your trade. You might be dead right from your preparation pre-market and you saw everything correct, but that's not what it's going to do all day. So the trade came, it went, and now it's up to you to kind of move on. Um, all right, so next up is failed follow through VCIG. Higher the better. And this one's been a nice little trader the last couple days. I shorted the ramp on Friday, faded it down, worked out really, really well. Uh, PLTR, I'd be watching for the same deal. Uh, and AFRM and VKTX. So you guys should be familiar with these names. VKTX has been a fantastic trader. We are at daily chart resistance. So there's two potentials here. One, if it gaps up and flushes through, it could trigger for a nice unwind. You can see the volume associated with this pullback. Now, uh, if this does unwind, I would assume that it might actually get saved, right? So it could go down a buck and then end up flat on the day. So be aware of that. Um, but going back to AFRM, same deal. You know, it's been steadily down since the downgrades and, and all that good stuff. Uh, and also once the crowd kind of left, got squeezed out, they rotated out and then here we are. So the thought process could be, we could be down 50, 60, 70 cents and then come back and close green. So I'd be aware of or prepared for that. On the continuation side of things, uh, BTBT and BITF, we've been talking about these for a, a few weeks now. Great breakouts. And uh, like I've said the, the first time, they remind me of Mara and Riot like way back when, you know, over here. Uh, I'm not saying that they're going to do that, but, you know, it's, it's good to kind of have uh, an imagination sometimes. So, you know, this is kind of what they remind me of this setup right over here, and then they took off. So BITF and BTBT, if Bitcoin stays heavy, these are the types that could potentially have uh, a short crowd that uh, will propel this thing much higher than it even should be at. Um, next couple, MEDS and CLEU. So MEDS, um, no position. This one, um, uh, I've seen a, a few people trading it. Nice break out there. Uh, it would be nothing to chase, but watch. And if it starts to form a base at uh, 750s, we could be looking at uh, double digits at some point here soon. And, you know, they just soak the flow, grinds higher. Uh, probably a boring trade, you know, if you're trying to get in there and get in and get out and try to nail this trade. I don't think it's that kind of trade. I think you need to, more of a big picture uh, view. 
Clue, uh, clue. if you guys remember, under 60 cents, we talked about it in the room. No, I didn't go long, no. Um, there wasn't a trade there for me, but uh, there was many, many millions on the offer. So I had mentioned, like, look at that. I think it was like a 1.7 million share offer or something crazy. So it looks like maybe they had a plan. Maybe they converted stock and then they, they put it in friendly accounts or something and then they had a plan to walk it up. So this goes on watch as one of the types that could be one of those China... Uh, walk up and then liquidation type plays. It has a history of it. This is kind of how they do it, in my opinion, potentially, and again, I'm just guessing, but potentially convert a bunch of paper, friendly accounts, walk it up, slowly move out from the friendly accounts into you know, where, wherever they're getting volume from, Telegram, WhatsApp, and all over the web. Uh, and then once they put out a couple PRs, they pull the plug and we're down 80% on the day. So. Uh, that doesn't mean it's happening to, you know, tomorrow, but it is something that I want to set price alerts and stay focused because the day that it does it is going to be a good day. And then MGOL, uh, this one I'm still long. I like the consolidation. You can see the uh, wicks that we talked about before this breakout. Now let's see if three, you know, 280s, 270s, threes or so starts to consolidate sort of like it did uh, over in the uh, 2 to 220 range. If so, then we could have a nice leg up. If not, don't overstep. Just like, uh, what was it, CFRX? CFRX was a disappointing one. That, that one I was long. Uh, I was up decently. I think I had like a 190 average or something. Uh, it was up to like two, then they never put out a PR, uh, and then it started to fade off. So I ended up bailing uh, 205, two 190s, and I think the last bit's at uh, 180s. And uh, I added one more section for today, mean reversion trades. Uh, Damien, my, my video guy, might, might kill me because he's going to have to make a new, uh, a new image. <laughs> but uh, CVNA and AI are on those. And, and basically what those are is just like when things go straight up and they tend to come back down to a particular level, when things go straight down, there's usually you know, some sort of, they, they mean revert back to also where they came from. Doesn't mean it's not going to continue to go lower, but a lot of times they come down go up higher than you think, lower than you think, come back, and then slowly taper off. So I think that if we had a big gap down, a big flush, I think we will have a nice reversal day before it slowly just dwindles off over the next two to three months. So that's it. Um, I think. I don't think I have any other notes. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, like I said, I think I said at the start, but you know, AI, CVNA, PLTR, AFRM, SOFI, NEO, XPEV, those are all trades that we've been talking about for a couple weeks. And last week, if you were prepared, uh, typically that would be like one of my stellar, like top weeks of the year kind of situation with the AI, CVNA, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but like I said, I, I'm just sized down a little bit and just trying to enjoy. Um, but point being is when you stock those things and wait for those trades, Days like Friday are the days that can change the trajectory of, of where you're headed on the year. So be aware of that. It's not about coming every single day and, and sizing up as much as you can and, and forcing the trade. It's about those two times, you know, back in, in before 2020, it was about the two times per month. And now I feel like it's back into that as, as well. But two times where your A plus, not my A plus setup. But your A plus, what are you best at? That could be a, a mean reversion bounce play. That could be a, a long setup, whatever it may be. But the two times that it really sets up and has volume and gives you that ability to scale into that winner, that's the ones that you want to focus on. And I was talking to Sam about that too is uh, when we were uh, trading on, I think it was Friday. But, um, you know, it's, it's about staying alive and... and going through the motions and practicing good risk management, all that good stuff. And then it's about those one or two times. So, you know, you maybe you only make, let's just call it 500 a day, um, you know, for simplicity. 500 a day, most days, you know, of the month. But if those two days, you can capture two to 5K, what does that do to the rest of the year? Two times per month. And people, a lot of times underestimate that power. So focusing on what you are best at and when they set up and making sure that you don't miss it. Don't get exhausted prior to it. Let it set up. Let it come to you. That's what it's about. And so personally, APLD, 
was that for me. Had I been full size and, and had I been not in, you know, trading without shoes on and wanting to walk out to the beach. Um, so that is the type of setup for me that will change how things look at the end of the year. So think about that in your own trading. It's not about always coming to you know, the, the market and pushing buttons. It's about finding what works the best for you and making sure that you exploit that twice a month. All right, catch you guys in the room.